do this. Hello, everyone. Thank you all for joining. It's time for another exciting lightning talk. I'm Parak Katkar, your host for tonight. I am a managing director at Enridham, and we have a lot of exciting content lined up for you in the upcoming weeks. Our lightning talks are hosted every Thursday at 5.15 p.m. Eastern time. And each week, one of our practice area consultant um, speaks on the latest and greatest technology trends in the industry that will help you keep learning and growing in your career. And this week, uh, Daniel Fuentes, who is a passionate software engineer with us, will give us an overview of uh, Java's updated HTTP client, which was added in Java 11. So I'm really looking forward to see what Daniel has in store for us. So without further ado, let's get it started, Daniel. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks, Parag, for the intro. Uh, my name is Daniel Fuentes, as Parag mentioned. I am a software engineer consultant here with Enrhythm. Um, and I'm here to talk to you about um, the Java HTTP updated client. Um, so let's get into it. So what are we going to be talking about today? Uh, first, I'll give out a, an interview of what HTTP is, uh, some of the, the improvements between HTTP 1.1 and HTTP 2. Um, how the new um, HTTP2 um, impacts Java, how's that, you know, kind of motivated to get an updated Java client. And I'll do a demo of, uh, of the new HTTP Java client in Java 11. So what is HTTP? HTTP is, stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. Uh, so HTTP is an application layer protocol that is designed to transfer information between network devices. HTTP runs on top of other layers within the network protocol stack. So on here you can see applications, application layer sits on top, and these are all the other layers that sort of um, make the, the connection happen. A typical flow of, the, of an HTTP connection involves a client machine requesting some sort, of, some sort of resource from that from a server. And then the server once receives that request, it replies to that requested message. Uh, we have a little depiction here, a client talking to a server and a back and forth connection. So what's the purpose of HTTP? So HTTP was invented back in the early 90s uh, alongside HTML. And it was in, originally used to sort of define how to load web pages using hypertext or hyperlinks as known today. Um, so, and this, all of this came part of, you know, the first interactive text web browser, right? So, and it came to now we know as the World Wide Web. The protocol today still remains one of the main primary um, ways to connect in the internet. So what are some of the improvements to HTTP over HTTP2? So some of the improvements of HTTP2 over HTTP1.1, HTTP2 is based on streams. So before this new version, uh, HTTP was only meant for text-only requests, previous, the previous standard. These streams can also be multiplex. In, in, the, in a sense, you can send multiple requests in synchronously instead of waiting for one re request to kind of come back before you can send another one. All of this can happen over a single uh, TCP connection. Uh, TCP is another protocol uh, that's used in, in, in the network layer. Um, this overall just means that you get better performance. Basically, you reduce your latency. Uh, I have a couple of depictions here. Uh, so let's look at this one. So HTTP 1.1, one, one, uh, sort of like you have a client send in a, a request and then the server re responds. And then the next request won't come back, won't be sent out until you receive that single, um, that original request. In HTTP2, it enables the client to send, as said here, multiple connections over a single connection. Sorry, multiple requests over a single connection. Um, that's a high level. And here is sort of another, another depiction of how that, that goes. You have multiple requests coming back and forth waiting and HTTP2, sort of like a single request, single, single pipeline. Uh, and that's where you transfer your data. Uh, so how does HTTP2 impact Java? So before we go into that, uh, let's go over some history. So before um, the class and sort of the, the client that came with the JDK, with the Java developer kit, was 
this HTTP URL connection class. And it came with Java since, you know, the early, the late 90s, which is when the internet started. And it was sort of like the sign on the HTTP 1.1 protocol. What happens is, is that this client has not been updated. Um, so as, the internet, as we all know, the internet has changed very drastically. And just uh, the client, the native client has not kept up with it. It only supports text, and as you as we know, like all of the inter like all of the internet connections today are very dynamic and very all kinds of things more than text. And then this has driven developers to sort of like use third party solutions, things like you know, Eclipse or Apache HTTP clients, as well as Google's HTTP clients. And on top of that, um, it sort of worked on blocking mode, meaning uh, you cannot execute any other type of uh, logic or code in when you in your application until you received that request back. So if you had a lot of you know a lot once you sent uh, a connection, it took a long time to come back. You basically your application was idle until that happened. And on top of that, to set up the the client itself was very difficult to use. So we have Java Duke here, thumbs down. It wasn't really reliable. Now some of the advantage of the new Java eleven HTTP client. Um, the main one is you don't need to sort of like manage dependencies uh, from the third-party client because the new client it's, it comes with your data key. Um, another advantage of the of the new client is that it's, this new client is backwards compatible with HTTP 1.1, so the previous uh, definition of HTTP. For and it also sort of provides backward compatibility for those services that have not migrated to HTTP 2.0 yet. Again, the client uh, supports the protocol standard of sending asynchronous messages over a, a single HTTP request via this send async uh, method that I will demo. And then overall, it's just a, it improves vastly uh, your, your overall connection because, because of the, the way it compresses the data and the way the data is transmitted into a single connection. This is all because we're instead of transmitting text, or encoded text, we're transmitting uh, binary frames. Okay, so demo of the HTTP Java 11 client. So I'd like to sort of set the stage of what the demo is gonna be. Uh, so the demo is gonna be sort of like, let's think of it, you know, how are we gonna do a common task today in today's internet? So a common task, when you browse the web today, you kind of load images and you load interactive um, content on your browser. So we will go over a use case on how, a couple of use cases of how to send multiple image requests, just like you were browsing today, uh, a website today. Uh, here are some of the cases. So I'll go over, you know, the HTTP 1.1, HTTP 2, so on and so forth. Uh, so right, let's, let's dig into it. Um, let me move my zoom. Let me hide so much. Thing. Um, okay. So here we have our demo. This is for our HTTP native client, and we're gonna be using version HTTP 1.1. As I mentioned earlier, um, this new client is backwards compatible. So I will, I will do, I'll, I will do another, another, another case here well, where I'll comment this line out and I'll do sort of the HTTP.2 version. And you know, we'll see how those requests come again. What we're doing is uh, I'm hitting this website that just returns a given amount of um, images. Uh, in this case, I've set it to 20 images. So I'm gonna get a list of 20 images and I'm gonna attempt to load them. And as I load them, I will sort of wait to go through that list iteratively and see how long it takes uh, for the images to start. To, to complete, to fully complete. Uh, so let me run here. Again, we're running Java, uh, sorry, Java client version, HTTP 1.1. We're trying to load 20 images. Uh, sorry. Why did it? Uh, I think I misnamed these guys. Yeah, I misnamed, I've, I have a, have a typo. So 
I'll run it here. Got ahead of myself. Okay, so what are, what are we seeing here? Um, we're creating the request to load image and I'll click on an image just, that, just so that you have a visual representation of what we're actually getting. So we basically go to the browser and we load this image. And once we send the request, the request doesn't come back. We don't get the request. This, we, don't, we don't get to do the second request until the first one completes. This is called blocking mode. And as you can see, as my list increments, if I do more than 20 uh, image requests, uh, if I'm loading a very content heavy website, you can see how this you know, can be very cumbersome and you just have a blank page or half loaded images in the meantime. Uh, we have some stats here. So we have 20 images that were loaded in about 4,300 milliseconds. Okay, uh, now I'll run the, the version again and we switch to HTTP.2. Um, I'd like to mention that while I was putting this demo together, uh, the, what I saw that was the easiest is for example, this called the send method, uh, part of the HTTP client. Um, it sort of allows the backward compatibility. So if I were to now run this application again, it will be similar behavior. It will be HTTP2 version of the client sort of being backwards compatible with the blocking mode of the previous client. So again, one request cannot be sent until the other one is completed. Pretty similar here. Okay, so now to the updated version. Um, very similar setup. I'm calling the same website for 20 images. And what instead I will do is I will call this method send async. So what this is happening is I would first build all my requests. And as I go through building my requests, I will then collect all those, all those requests and see how those complete in the meantime. And these requests do not put your application in blocking mode, meaning you can actually perform other types of tasks in your application. So let's run it. So one key feature here is I've created all of these requests. And when, after I start sending them out, some of them are coming back out of order. And in any case, this is an advantage because as I mentioned earlier, we're not waiting for requests to be completed before the next one comes out. What we're doing here is we're sending all these requests at once and then the client itself sort of lets me know when these requests have come and in the order that come. Again, the internet, you know, very convoluted space where lots of information and being able to have this native client support the, this, this functionality out of the box is definitely an improvement. Um, that concludes the demo.